project Tamriel team is busy working on the next release of Skyrim Home of the Nords and Province Cyrodiil. Both of these projects are massive mods for the Elder Scrolls III Morrowin. Province Cyrodiil is aimed at recreating the province of Cyrodiil based on the team's own interpretation of Cyrodiil and the lore that existed before the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, although it takes inspiration from some of the ideas in that game too. In this video, I will focus on the upcoming release of Province Cyrodiil known as the Abyssian Shores. We will discuss the geography, the new city settlements, points of interest, new factions and more. Anvil is a large city being added by this release and I got some questions answered by the developers about the city. We then end with dream time as usual for some stunning screenshots, so stick around till the end. The Abyssian Shores release covers the Kingdom of Anvil in its entirety, a temperate and Mediterranean realm with broad swaths of wilderness, dozens of dungeons, a vast sea area and many settlements. The largest of these is the city of Anvil itself, a powerful and prosperous port city known for its beautiful temples, thriving markets and bustling harbour. The kingdom also includes the dusty caravan town of Brina Cross a picturesque island town called Charak and several villages that dot the strident coast region. In addition to the mainland, a large portion of the Abyssian Sea will be included in the release. These offer many islands and underwater adventures for any explorer brave enough to dive in. This is the large area of the release and will contain many settlements. As you can see, all the orange colored settlements are controlled by the Kingdom of the Anvil. Talking about the kingdom, it will have its own king and queen and has nothing to do with the count or the countess we saw in Oblivion. So no Milona Umbranox here, even though Province Cyrodiil is set in 327 and Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion is set only 6 years later. Yeah, so no characters from the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion will be making an appearance here except for some easter eggs or cameos. Uh, how do you feel about that? This makes me feel that Either Province Cyrodiil or The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion is set in an alternate reality. The settlements that are under the control of the Kingdom of the Reach are the Metropolitan City of Anvil. The scale of this city will be huge and will make Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion's Anvil look like child's play. <laughs> this is the speciality of Project Amriel. They build cities with a large scale. Then we have two towns, Brina Cross, which is northeast of Anvil, and Charak, which is on the island of Sturk. We then have three villages, Tereswi, Halsadek and Archad. The red forts are imperial forts. The brown fort or camp is part of the kingdom of Such. We only see one location from that kingdom in this release. If you compare this map with the Elder Scrolls IV map and look at the settlements in the Gold Coast, Province Cyrodiil blows oblivion out of the water. Elder Scrolls IV only had one city and no settlements. The Gold Coast here in Province Cyrodiil is totally packed with tons of POIs. You will have caves, settlements, shrines, septim fort ruins, remen fort ruins, Aelid ruins. The difference is night and day. Yeah, I see four septim fort ruins. These are Fort Swordsmith, Gold Road Watchtower, Fort Wave Moth, and Dusk Watch Keep in the island of Sturk. Now, septim fort ruins are ruins of forts built in the Septim Empire. So any legion fort that was built from Tiber Septim's reign to present day but was destroyed is now known as Septim Fort Ruin. Then we also have Remen Fort Ruins. There are five ancient ruins from the Remen dynasty of the first era. All of these are known as Lemon Fort Ruins. Uh, there are eight Elid Ruins in the Gold Coast region. Uh, Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion only had two Elid Ruins. As you can see, there's a lot more to explore here. You have lots and lots of caves, underwater sunk ships and many Colovian barrows which are similar in style to Nordic barrows built by the Nedic people of Cyrodiil. Finally, there is one Dremer ruin at the edge of the map. As you can see here, it's, it's known as Ark Drams. This island is extremely close to the province of Hammerfell and that is where the hammer fell. 
This was built by the Rorkin Vimmer clan as described in the Pocket Guide to the Empire first edition. The Rorkin clan settled in the islands of the Abishian and of course they didn't follow exact contemporary bo province borders. So some Vimmer ruins are also in modern Sridhar. So as you can see, you will encounter a large number of settlements belonging to different factions and there are tons of interesting points of interest to explore. Also, if you have explored the Gold Coast region in the Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion, then you won't be familiar with many of these names. That's because Project Tamriel is using the lore from the old Elder Scrolls games from 1997-1998 to 2004. Any piece of lore that fits in from 2006 to 2011-12 may be used. Oh, Anvil City. So here are some interesting insights about this city from the Project Tamriel developers. So I had some questions and they were kind enough to answer them. So let's start. How would one describe the architecture of Anvil? The city proper evokes northern Mediterranean vibes. House walls are adorned with vivid frescoes and murals, showing that Anvil is the center of art. The docks are filled with ships of all kinds. Some of them uh, have never been seen in mods before. On both sides, Anvil is guarded by strong imperial fortifications. Fort Teladrag to the north and Goldstown Castle to the south. By looking at the map, the Kingdom of Anvil rules a large area of the Gold Coast region. Who is the current king or queen? And do we have any information on the brief history of the kingdom up to 3E427? What were your references? The name of the region in our version of Cyrodiil is Strident Coast. The kingdom is ruled by Queen Regent Milona Connemores. Since the disappearance of her husband, some of the local merchant nobility has become displeased with her rule, which they see as illegitimate. Thus, there were some attempts to overthrow her. Milona is trying hard to win support of the local population and the player might play a crucial role in that. As for references, uh, basic characters in play were prescribed by TES4. But after the team has moved on from prequelism, their stories were revised and enhanced with in-house ideas. The inspiration was drawn also from historical sources and classic fiction of real world. Will the Imperials have a presence in Anvil City? The Imperials will definitely have a presence in Anvil City, because it's their city from ground up. It was founded and inhabited by Imperials for millennia. But two other races have a significant influence here as well. The Red Guards from Hammerfell and the Wood Elf Diaspora from the south. Tell us about the Abishian Trading Company. They have a building in the city and uh, what is its function? The Abishan Trading Company is the biggest enterprise in the Abishan Sea region. Thus, its building will be the most impressive in view of its concurrence. A bespoke mesh was created to make this building unique and imposing. Can players take a boat from Anvil to Karak and even from Anvil to Skingrad in the future? Yes, definitely. The player will be able to travel by boat between Cyrodiil ports. Aside from the Mages Guild, this is the most comfortable way to reach the island of Stirk. Skingrad should also have boat connection, but it's far in the future at the moment. The next port city in our plans is the city of Such. Bririka Private Bank. Now, there's this building in Anvil City. What sort of services can we expect at this building? Bririka Bank will function pretty much like its counterpart in Old Ebonheart, Tumbril Rebuild. You should be able to deposit, loan or withdraw money, as well as do some quest interactions that involve the bank. Robbing the bank is of course an option too. Anvil Imperial Geographical Society They have a presence in Anvil. Can you share what they are all about and what do they offer for the player? The Geographical Society is a flavor faction, means you can't officially join it. Uh, that shows how the Empire explores and catalogues the world. 
Currently it works on the next edition of the Pocket Guide to the Empire. The player could participate in this work. Do you have any other things that are worth mentioning? Other things worth mentioning. Great care was taken to make the sea part of the release an interesting place to explore. There will be many smaller islets around the sea aside from Stirk, and the sea floor won't be empty. Goblin Wars is a considerable theme of this release. And speaking of settlements, Anvil won't be the only settlement of the mainland, of course, but there will be half a dozen more settlements in the kingdom. So factions, I did speak to the devs about factions in this release and we will have the usual, the guild of mages, the guild of fighters, the imperial legion, the guild of thieves. These are self-explanatory. These are the classic third era factions that are allied to the imperials and they exist in other provinces too. So we'll have these and then we'll also have the kingdom of Anvil. This is equivalent to the great house of Morrowind, though it's not quite like it because the player will be working wholly for the local ruler the queen and her representatives. And then you have a couple of clan questlines. You'll be able to join the itinerant priests who are a general relig religious faction of Cyrodiil. This faction is decentralized and consists of traveling monks, priests and adventurers who seek spiritual enlightenment in their journeys. There will be four quest givers in, of this faction in the Abishan shows. The developers also said that there's going to be a goblin clan. Apparently, the Goblin questline is being planned as of now and is in the early process of being made. Uh, we don't know anything else about this as of now. That's pretty cool. Uh, the fact that you can actually speak to a Goblin chief and actually do tax for them, that's very interesting. Unfortunately, in Elastros 4 Oblivion, they were just made as generic enemies for the player to kill. I would love to interact with these Goblin clans and understand their culture. As you can see, you have around seven factions so in this release there's tons of stuff to do and uh, lots of quests to take part in then there are organizations like the astrological society and the imperial geographic society uh, these organizations are working on their own projects and the player can help them by aiding on small quests so as you can see you have around seven factions and a couple of mini factions so the abishian shows release will have a lot to offer for the player Alright, we have come to the end of this month's episode of Project Tamriel. So I would love to read your thoughts on Project Tamriel and the team's vision for the Gold Coast region or the Strident Coast as I call it here. Do share your comments below. And now as usual, we'll move on to dream time. May the divines be with you.